Hi, this is Mike Drake at the University of Arizona. Can you hear me? Yeah, Mike, we got you loud and clear. Welcome aboard. We're on board the Japanese module on the space station right now. Well, as you can hear, there's a lot of applause in the room. Um, we have a lot of different people here today. Um, we have staffers and friends from your wife, Congressman Gabby Gifford's office, who are with us. We have a number of first responders from the fire department that are with us. Uh, most importantly for us, I think, is we've got a lot of middle school students who are going to be the ones asking you questions. And uh, we also have a number of, of University of Arizona Space Grant students, which uh, your wife Gabby has been very strongly supportive of, a great program at NASA. So let me get right to it. Um, I appreciate you taking time tonight, Mark, and your two colleagues. Do you want to introduce the other two colleagues with you so that the people in the audience know who they are? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, to my right, your left, is our pilot, Greg, Greg Johnson, uh, Air Force Colonel, just retired. And on my left, your right, Ron Guerin, who is the U.S. Segment Commander of the International Space Station. He's been on board here about, what, seven weeks now? Great, thank you very much. Let me bring up our first middle school student. I'm gonna ask her to say her name and ask her question. Hi, my name is Lena Ariaga from Gridley Middle School. My question is, what feeling did you have when you first looked out the window? Well, let me, let me first say, you know, for everybody there, welcome aboard the space station. It's uh, a great opportunity for us to have a chance to talk to the folks there back in Tucson. I know I probably know some people in the in the office. We can't see you, uh, but you know it's uh, it's nice to have the opportunity to do this event. We just got up. I imagine you guys are getting ready to go to sleep this morning. Um, with regard uh, or this evening, with regards to your question, though, for me, when I first saw the Earth, it was over 10 years ago. I very distinctly remember it. I was the pilot on the same space shuttle that's docked just a little bit to out that hatch and to our left, Space Shuttle Endeavor. And at Mach 15, when you're going into orbit, the space shuttle rolls the he uh, to heads up. So it's upside down and it rolls heads up. And I looked over my right shoulder out the window. You could see this big blue planet out there. And it's really like, even though it was 10 years ago, it's like it was yesterday. Very, very spectacular view. And it's pretty exciting to get to go into space. I'm going to add Thanks. to that answer uh, only because uh, uh, I experienced um, my uh, first daytime liftoff about a week and a half ago. And uh, to my left was Commander Kelly, and I was the pilot in the right seat, just like uh, Mark was recalling t from 10 years ago. My first flight was three years ago, and it was at night. And so uh, this past launch was my first day uh, launch as well. And uh, looking over my right shoulder, I was amazed at how uh, the Atlantic Ocean accelerated by. Uh, I do recall looking out the window, and Mark said, focus. Because uh, as the pilot, I'm supposed to focus on the engines and other systems. But I was amazed at what it looked like out the window. So I just wanted to share that with you. Thanks so much. It's nice to know you're human as well as you're highly talented and trained. Next question. Please say your name. Hi, I'm Alex Boland. And do you have to tie everything while in space or during liftoff and landings? Hi, Alex. Uh, yeah, we, we really do. When uh, On launch, everything vibrates uh, um, and shakes, and so everything has to be tied down. But then once we get to orbit, it, you know, it's not shaking and vibrating anymore, but if we don't tie it down, it'll float away. So, uh, you know, one of the big challenges living up here is um, not losing your stuff. So we, we have to um, keep things tied down, keep things secured, because, um, you know, you'll lose it pretty fast. But that, you know, that becomes challenging but it also becomes fun too so if you're eating a meal and uh, you know you have a, a couple of things in your hands if you if you run out of hands you could just take your your food and, and stick it right there and then uh, go about go about uh, you know getting a drink or something else and then just grab it and there it is okay just like that so 
So it's uh, you know it's challenging on one hand, but it's a lot of fun on the other. Sounds like very convenient and better than growing another arm. <laughs> Next uh, student, please. Say your name. Hi, my name is Bailey Bishop from Gridley Middle School. My question is, how are you adjusting to zero gravity? Yeah, I think the first time you fly into space, it takes a while to get used to it. You know, there's no up and down anymore, and it's hard to manage your stuff, and the fluid shifts in your body, so you, you, don't, you don't feel too well. The more you do it, the easier it gets. It seems like, for me, this is my fourth flight, and it seems like my body remembers what this is all about and understands it. and. I can get adjusted quicker. Space station crew members tend to say it takes about a month till you're really adjusted on orbit. I've never been in space for a month at a time, so I, I can't really comment about that. Thank you. And the next question. And they Hi, my name is Mia Birch from Gridley Middle School. My question is, why do you take dry food with you and can you eat regular meal in space or is it impossible to keep the food from floating off? Well, we have uh, Velcro attached to all our food items. Mark just grabbed, looks like some dried fruit of some kind. Pineapple. Uh, dried pineapple. We have a lot of dehydrated foods like uh, dehydrated uh, pineapple and uh, we have other items that come uh, pre-packaged, all ready to go, and they're in uh, packets that we just put in the oven and, and, and heat. We also have uh, clear packets, uh, plastic packets, that we inject water in to rehydrate them. Um, and, and, and every meal is, is fun, so uh, uh, it, it's really easy to eat, and uh, the food is great. Uh, some people love the shrimp cocktail. I actually prefer... Uh, the M&Ms, and uh, it's 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 a normal diet. I made a hamburger the other day. Uh, since it's zero gravity, I was able to stick a tortilla on a clip, put a little ketchup and mustard. It doesn't go anywhere, and then I stuck the the hamburger patty right exact right on the ketchup, and it stuck uh, because of course gravity's not acting on it. And after I took it off the clip, I rolled it up and ate it. So uh, we have pretty much normal foods, no soda pop or things like that. Thank you. That looks like fun. Next question. Oh. Hi, my name is Alex Enriquez from Gridley Middle School. My question is, how long does it take to readjust when you get back to Earth? Well, Alex, that's a good question, and a lot of it depends on how long you've been up here. Um, for shuttle crew members that are up here for maybe two weeks or so, uh, the adjust the readjustment is, is pretty quick, um, maybe a few days. Uh, I remember on my shuttle flight about three years ago, I think it was um, probably a day or two before I could walk without thinking about it. And I remember when I first got back, I would take a, a step and go, okay, there goes the left foot, there goes the right foot. I'm starting to lean left. I need, I need to lean back right. And so, but that, that passed very quickly. Um, for, sh for station crew members who are up here, you know, maybe six months, uh, the rehabilitation is much longer. And um, some of the things that we do to help pre prevent or, or to, to make it so that when we get back, we don't have such a big adjustment period is exercise. And we do two hours a day of either resistance exercise like weightlifting or uh, aerobic exercise like riding the bike or running on a treadmill. And that really seems to help. It, it helps us uh, in our adjustment when we come back to Earth. And it also helps uh, uh, prevent some of the, or, or slow down some of the processes of just living in space, like losing uh, some of our uh, bone mass and uh, our muscles weakening and things like that. So it, it helps to counteract that. Uh, so there's a big, uh, long period of time uh, after we get back uh, where we slowly, uh, you know, do a lot of exercise and a lot of other uh, activities to, to readjust to gravity once we get back. Okay, now next question from... My name is Shay Bushy, and I'm from Mid Gridley Middle School. My question is, how do you sleep in space?
Well, you, you know, you could sleep just kind of floating around. The problem with that is you'd bump into y to other people and you'd wake them up. And then you might not have any idea where you're going to um, go to on the space station. It's a really big place. So what we do is we sleep in a sleeping bag. It has a bunch of straps and hooks, and you can tie it to the ceiling or to the floor or the wall. Uh, last night, I slept on the floor of the flight deck of the space shuttle. Uh, Mike Fink, one of our crew members, was sleeping on the wall downstairs, and sometimes people will sleep on the ceiling. It takes a while to get used to sleeping in zero gravity. There's no pressure on your body. My first night in space 10 years ago, I got in my sleeping bag, and then I immediately rolled over on my side like I would in bed and then thought to myself, well, this is kind of dumb because there is no side, because there is no up or down. So you might as well just stay in the position you're in. Thank you. Hi. Oh, do we have last year? Hi, my name is Kirsten Bassett, and I'm from Gridley Middle School. My question is, how is growing plants in space different from growing them on Earth? Kristen, that's a really good question because we're actually doing that. And uh, you know, uh, we're trying to figure out the answer to that question, really. And, you know, what effect gravity has in how plants grow. And one of the things we're trying to do is remove, because we're in, in space and because we're in this what we call microgravity environment, we can eliminate uh, gravity from the equation. And we can uh, see how plants grow without gravity. And that helps us to better understand the process of plant growth, which helps us uh, understand how crops grow and how we can make more food. And so one of the things that we're doing is we're looking at what factor gravity plays in uh, a plant's growth and how that compares to things like uh, moisture in the soil and, and um, uh, chemicals that, that are used for fertilizers and, and things like that. And, you know, a lot of the research that we do is so that we can go farther and farther into space. And, you know, when we go uh, to Mars and beyond, you know, we're going to have to grow our own food in order to do that. And so that's a very important part of the research that we do up here. But you know, on the one hand, we're, we're trying to discover how to go further in space, but we're also helping, uh, you know, all the people on Earth as well as we grow, uh, you know, fi figure out how to grow crops in, in areas that are stricken with drought and, uh, you know, areas that don't have uh, really good soil. And so there's a lot of uh, experimentation that we do to look at the, the effects of gravity. And we also have, you know, cameras on the space station that look at crops uh, throughout the world and, and evaluate how they're growing over time so that we could um, better understand that process. So very good question. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nora Thompson from Gridley Middle School. And my question is, how can you create gravity on the space station? If you've watched any uh, science fiction movies, uh, you might have seen rotating uh, spaceships, large rotating spaceships. And that would really be the only way uh, that I can think of to uh, artificially create gravity. We really don't know exactly what gravity is. Uh, so that's one of the problems. But we do know that by rotating a large object, we can create the sensation of gravity. Now, the space station, although we're pretty much uh, stationary uh, in space with relative to the Earth, so we feel pretty much zero gravity, we are slowly rotating as we orbit the Earth every 90 minutes. And so uh, one of our uh, uh, fellow comrades, an Italian astronaut, he can actually sense that uh, feeling where one side of the space shuttle has just a little bit of a drift up and, uh, and way at the far end of the Russian side it has a little bit of a drift down as we gradually uh, rotate around the Earth. So um, I, I would say we possibly are experiencing that now. Some of us don't necessarily believe that's true. But uh, if you really rotate the vehicle uh, quickly, we'd be able to kind of have an artificial sense of gravity. <laughs> 